What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Pack Pride Podcast, the post game podcast. I'm your host, Corey Smith, here with Michael Clark. Michael, uh, NC State, a 41 to 10 win. I think uh, some people probably wanted to see maybe a, a made field goal there at the end to make it 44 to three. And then, you know, UConn comes back to make it 41 to 10 to, to cover the spread comfortably. Uh, but how are you doing after that one, man? Doing great. Glad that uh, out of conference play is over, um, to be honest with you. It's just, you know, no disrespect to UConn. They're terrible. They're a bad football team. It's like Charleston Southern a couple weeks ago. I mean, just I don't enjoy these games at all. Uh, I know maybe I'm in the minority. I just I think it's gotten to the point where why are we still playing these football games? But anyways, uh, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I mean, I – I think the hope was a few years ago when this one was scheduled that it would be, you know, maybe a little bit better of a team at that point. But man, that uh, that UConn program has really gone. They down. Stink. I mean, they, they stink. They're terrible. I mean, yeah. they are really bad. Uh, they could not move the ball at all. Thirty nine yards passing. <laughs> I mean, they had sixty. They had sixty seven total yards heading into the fourth quarter. Yeah, uh, and then, you know they get that long drive at the end against the backup NC State defense. So. Um, you know, another another smothering performance for the defense. But, you know, I don't know how much stock you put into it for UConn. I think people feel a little bit better about the way the defense played last week against Texas Tech than, you know, than this week because you just – I mean, everybody just knows UConn's bad. But uh, I think this is about getting guys reps, and I know we'll get into that, getting guys some live game reps, and you were able to do that. You were able to you know, hopefully come out relatively healthy. There was a couple scares tonight, but you – know. Yeah. Yeah, I asked uh, – and by the way, Sam, I see your question. I will uh, I will um, answer – we'll answer that in just a little bit. I see some other questions pouring in. Um, want to make sure everybody knows. We're, we're going to answer those in just a second. I wanted to get through some of the, you know, beginning stuff here. But uh, first of all, just, you know, the offense for NC State, this was a, uh, you know, a, a big night for the offense. I think a lot of people kind of thought that would be the case. You know, obviously, <laughs> you're facing a UConn team that is just not very good defensively. Uh, Devin Leary, four touchdowns, over 300 yards passing. I uh, don't have the stats in front of me right now, but I think he was, yeah, let's see, 32 of 44, 320 yards, uh, four touchdowns. Did throw the one interception, uh, but, you know, 73 completion percent or 73% of his passes were completed uh, and, and spread the ball around to four different receivers. Devin Carter getting his first touchdown of the season. Uh, Keon Lassane, his first touchdown of his career. Porter Rooks, the same way, uh, first of his career. And then, uh, obviously, the first one being the Thayer Thomas, that 75-yard bomb to put him in second place all time and career receiving touchdowns. Uh, Michael, your, your thoughts on the offense as a whole. Again, you know, we're going to find out what this offense is really capable of next week uh, against Clemson. But, you know, what were your thoughts on on this game for them? Uh, there's still a work in progress, in my opinion. Uh, I did like the approach of coming out and throwing 32 times in the first half. I thought it was incredibly important to really get um, some confidence or, you know, just get the passing game going, get some guys involved, Devin Carter in particular, Thayer Thomas. Those are guys that you're really going to have to lean on in conference play because as we sit four games in, Corey, and not trying to be negative, they're undefeated, you still do not have a deep threat. So if you've got to have somebody who can be, to move the change, you know you've got two veteran guys, thought Porter Rooks came through, made some good plays. Um, again, uh, the offense, in my opinion, is not where I – and probably not just my opinion, where everybody would like it to be. But I think it tonight was a, a good, I guess, test, semi-test for him to just, you know, build some confidence, get some live reps for a bunch of guys. You just hope that uh, it can really start clicking at some point. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, I think, you know, having a couple guys out, you know, obviously not having Jordan Houston out there, um, you know, probably change things a little bit for this offense. But, uh, again, we'll see what they're really capable of next week because, you know, we saw what what they were able to do against Texas Tech this past week, and I think there was a lot left to be desired from that one. But, uh, again, you know, Clemson being this upcoming weekend, I think is going to be really telling for this team. Uh, you know, we saw a little bit of a deep dive tonight. I mean, I think uh, Demi Sumo or Kong Bay uh, played really well, you know, in the first half. He did come out. I asked uh, Dave Doran about – him after the game he said he was he thinks he's going to be fine just kept him out because you know there was no reason to put him back out there uh and then you know another question mark was uh grant gibson came out you know or uh, you know looked like he was injured at one point but he's perfectly fine he was still able to continue playing 
Uh, I think there was a lot of people kind of crying for like, hey, bring the starters out after seeing uh, after seeing a couple of guys you know go down. But uh, I wanted to say I was I was really impressed with uh, Michael Allen in this game. Uh, Ten carries for sixty six yards. I had another had another two catches for a total of six yards. Both of them, uh, you know, being for three yards on on you know. So a little over seventy yards for him today. Uh, you know, I mean, what were your thoughts on on the running game and and how Michael Allen played? Uh, along with some of these other guys that we'll probably see uh, play, you know, in the future too. I think the biggest takeaway was just getting guys like him carries um, live game action. Um, if there was a silver lining of not bringing Demi back in and you just fingers crossed, that's not serious. And it doesn't appear to be, it didn't look like it was on the sideline uh, getting Delbert Mims extended uh, carries. Uh, I just think it's important. Uh, just things can change so quickly at the running back position due to the physicality of it. Um, Again, you don't want to get to the point where those are your two primary backs, and you hope that won't happen this season. But I thought both guys, you know, did some good things. Demarcus Jones, I mean, they're capable. Um, and I think, again, I'm the guy I'm most excited about, I think, with everybody is Michael Allen. I think he's got a chance to be really good down the road. Uh, interested to see is this uh, a, probably a one off deal, or as the season goes on, do they find does he find some spot duty? Because he he is very talented, and I think for a first game, this was a, a good experience for him. Ideally, I think they do want to redshirt him. But, um, again, the running game, it, it's like the passing game. You would like it to be a little bit more explosive. Um, yeah. I think at this point you're still not hitting that. Um, you know, the big plays are not there. But at the same time, you know, State's 4-0. They have a chance to be ranked maybe in the top ten, um, depending on how things shake out. Um, this week, Arkansas uh, lost today. Yeah, so they, you know, they could slide up in there, and it's, you know, it, it's a far cry from where we were three years ago, Corey. So I just think we need to take a step back and realize, and, and this team, I don't think, offensively especially, has not played nearly to what I think it's capable of doing. So you have to feel good at four and zero. Yeah, I was going to say this one was, uh, you know, if this game now, this upcoming weekend, uh, Clemson and NC State. For those that haven't seen, has uh, been given a 7:30 p.m. kickoff time. It will be on ABC, uh, so it'll be a you know really big game there. Uh, again, this is you know this is another opportunity for NC State to uh, to try to win that game. Oh yeah, uh, I'm seeing somebody else pointed out here uh, that Oklahoma loss as well. I, I completely forgot about that. I was I was focusing on some of the other guys at the you know the the top of that top ten, uh, and Oklahoma will fall uh, quite a few spots. I don't know the guy, the teams behind NC State where they you know where they kind of shake out if if they would you know maybe jump NC State a uh, team like Utah that you know lost USC the- is also losing in the third quarter I know we'll put this podcast out tomorrow yeah. so there's a ways to go but they're struggling at Oregon State I mean not yeah. that yeah, there's, there's NC State, State just they're number nine right yeah there's seven UCL what well, USC is number seven number right seven. Now. Yeah. I mean, and all this is moot, guys. Uh, you know, we get excited about the polls and where state is, but I think it's, it's just really going to see a top ten matchup. That's, yeah, you that's did. That's reason. that's what yeah. you want. I guess that's what you want <laughs> on paper. But at the end of the day, if state goes down there ranked number ten and they don't win, they're going to drop. So and everybody's going to be like, they weren't. Yeah, they, they weren't a yeah. top ten team to begin with. I know, especially <laughs> the non-state fans down the road. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, and I wanted to say too. I mean, let's let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball too. Well, actually, before we do that, I wanted to bring up. I mean, obviously, this is a game that's that's against UConn. It's not something that we're going to put a ton of stock into. But you know, how much stock do you put in the fact that a guy like Devin Carter has a big game that he that he had tonight? I mean, I'm looking down the line here. There's five different guys that caught the ball five times tonight. I mean, Thayer Thomas with five receptions, 115 yards. Obviously, a 75 yard reception helps him significantly there, but. Uh, Devin Carter that we talked about last week played a ton of snaps, didn't even have a single target. Uh, Porter Rooks, five receptions in this one. He hadn't really had a, a breakout game. Uh, Daryl Jones and Keon Lassane, it, it felt like they were kind of playing all the hits tonight when it came to the receiving game uh, and seeing all those guys get, get as much yards as they did. How big was that for, for not only their confidence, but you know the, the veterans on this team and, and feeling good about those, te- those guys heading into uh, Clemson this upcoming weekend? Well, I think given the start of Thayer Thomas and especially Devin Carter has been particularly quiet, uh, I think going into this game, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe those two had combined for 156 yards receiving through the first three games. Tonight they come away with, what, 10 for 178 and two scores. 
I mean, that's what you need from them every week. I mean, I'm being honest. You've got to have – they need to come through for you week in and week out. And I know Devin Leary's going to spread the ball around, but I think what you're going to see is conference play gets going. This receiver rotation is going to shrink. And when it shrinks, fewer people are going to catch the ball. He's going to be looking for these two. And, Corey, they've got to step up and make plays. Um, and there's no reason to think they won't. They've done it, you know, for the most part their entire career – careers so i think tonight was a good step forward for them um they're going into a hostile environment next week you know leary's gonna be looking for both of those guys at critical moments and you know they've made big plays against clemson in the past you gotta hope they can come through again next week all right moving over to the defensive side of the football uh obviously another big performance for the defense as we said beforehand this is a a uconn team that you know, was out their their starting quarterback. They lost their starting or out their starting running back in this game. Lost their starting quarterback. You know, pretty early on in the game, uh, Turner finished ten of twelve. You know, thirty nine total yards. Uh, not a good game for the offense as a whole for UConn. And you know, somebody pointed out here too in our in our comments too that you know the the, the NC State defense give them some credit because uh, they made UConn look bad. I mean, Michigan made UConn look pretty bad too last week, fifty-nine to zero. Uh, so I, I don't know. Again, I don't know how UConn much is just bad. Play, period. But this, but, this they, defense, but this defense again did look very good. Just your your thoughts on the defense as a whole? I mean, yeah, they showed up, and I think that oftentimes that's probably one of the hardest things um, in a game like this. It's hard to get up. You could have easily looked ahead uh, to Clemson. And, you know, they didn't. I mean, they, they just suffocated UConn. I mean, they couldn't – they could not get anywhere. Uh, what was it? 41 yards rushing in the first half. I mean, they finished with 39 yards passing. I mean, it was a struggle. I think after the first drive, the first two plays, UConn gets back-to-back first downs. The rest of the game, they have a total of six. So, that just kind of shows you. And that, Corey, counts a fourth quarter where a lot of third and fourth string guys were in. I mean, it was a – a struggle. They added the late touchdown, but I mean, they were just completely overwhelmed all night. Yeah, and I was gonna say, I mean, you know, the only the only game where UConn has really looked competitive against a a Power Five team so far this season was against Syracuse, and and they scored fourteen points in that game. Uh, they still ended up losing uh, forty eight to fourteen. But you know, Zion Turner in that game was fourteen of seventeen. I'm looking at the stats here: ninety two yards, a touchdown. Uh, and, you know, they made it competitive at one you point. You feel for that kid, man. He's a true yeah. freshman, and he's just this schedule they've got with Syracuse, who's turned out to be a good team. Yeah. State, Michigan. I mean, you're arguably, what, three top 25 teams, probably back yeah. to back. Because, I mean, I think Syracuse, I believe they won last night. They're probably going to start getting some, some love if they continue to win. Uh, it's just not an ideal situation for a kid who was a high school senior last year. Obviously, they had the – kid get hurt in game one who the Penn State transfer and they basically have just thrown this kid into the fire and it's it's just been rough and tonight was was just extremely tough for him yeah and again you, know, you get to see some guys some backup players on this team uh guy like Sean Brown seven, he actually led the team in tackles tonight seven tackles uh Joshua Harris gets his first sack of his career and also gets another uh, half tackle for loss along with Savion Jackson uh, you got to see Davin Van get a, a big sack tonight too. So, uh, just your your thoughts on some of these younger guys that we've talked so much about uh, getting their chance to shine in this one too. You know, Van is is one that we expected, and I'm not saying we didn't expect Josh. I just think it was kind of a wait and see approach. He's a guy who dropped 50 plus pounds, and I think through four games, Corey. I mean, this kid's playing really well. I mean, yeah. he he is now motivated. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. He is now a consistent contributor on this team. And don't look now, but that's a pretty strong nose duo right there. With Joshua Harris playing the way he is right now, we all know how good Corey Durden is. Now Corey Durden does not have to play 70, 80 snaps a game. It's huge from just a production standpoint. It's easier on guys when they're you know that big. Uh, there's very little drop-off, if any, in my opinion, when he comes on the field. And, I, I mean – he is showing why he was so highly you know, sought after in high school. One of the best high school defensive linemen in the country could have literally gone anywhere. And uh, I just think Joshua Harris has the look of a future star. I mean, I think if he continues to progress, you know, you have to think Durden's going to be gone after this year. I mean, down the stretch in conference play, I mean, he's got, he's really got a chance to, 
to uh, turn heads. And I think, you know, a guy going into next year, he could just be a monster. Yeah, I mean, we got to see the C.J. Clark breakout game last week, Joshua Harris and, you know, Savion Jackson making a big impact in this one. Uh, and, you know, as we said, Davin Van, too. So it's just – I mean, that, that defensive line moving forward, I know, I mean, I, I saw somebody uh, mention that teams have been feasting. They said teams have been feasting on our backups uh, the past two games, the garbage time. I will say those garbage time uh, plays at the end of games have been against like your, your more of your deep dive guys at the end of games. So uh, I don't want to say, hey, you know, <laughs> this second line is not very good. It's just the fact that you're, you're putting some of these guys out there for the very first time uh, in some of the snaps, and they're all learning to play with each other against, you know, uh, not to say quality opponents, but against teams that they're, they're trying to figure things out and they're using as much as they can at the end of games. So uh, I, I wouldn't put too much stock into saying, hey, the, the backup defense is not very good. It's you're not putting out your second line because you know what you have in a lot of those guys. Those are third and fourth string players playing at the end of the games that – they don't expect to play for another two years or so. Uh, all right. Last thing I want to touch on here. It, uh, questionable uh, the special teams there. Um, you know, the, the fake field goal, uh, I had – I'm going to throw it up here. Uh, you know, Sam asked a question. He said, what, what was Dave Doran's purpose for wanting teams to have a, a fake punt? He said fake punt, but he meant uh, the field goal there, uh, not the punt on, on tape from State. He said that afterwards, uh, you know, afterwards and said something. I, I don't have the direct quote in front of me, but in the post game, he was asked about it. And he said something along the lines of like, I wanted it to be out there that we're not just going to, you know, constantly kick field goals in those situations. And we've been working on that for weeks. Uh, unfortunately, you do it in a situation where you get Chris Dunn potentially injured. I mean, he's tackled. Uh, Doran said afterwards he's going to be fine. But you saw Colin Smith come out there for the last few plays uh, when they when they were in kicking situations. Your your thoughts on that one, and um, I mean <laughs> the explanation there of of wanting to put it on film. Well, I mean I don't know. I mean the game was over at that point. I think too, it's one of those deals where, I mean, if it works, everybody's like, oh, what a great call. Like it's just, it's always one of those bang bang deals where everybody's like, why did they call that? But then if it works, it's like, oh man, that was such a great call. Look. I can tell you this, Chris Dunn is not going to win any sprint races. Watching him try to get to the corner, man, bless his heart. Um, you know, I, I'm glad he's not hurt. But uh, the defense is going to be need, going to need to be extremely fooled if he's going to have a chance to uh, make any plays with his legs. Let's just say that. Also, I mean, shout out to Colin Smith. I know he missed the last one. I think it was a 41 or yeah. 42-yarder, but – you know, hits the 40-yarder. Uh, he's been years. great this year on kickoffs. Yeah. I haven't talked about him enough. I mean, that's not an easy job. I know people think it, it's easy to kick the ball in the end zone. It's really not. And he does it on a very regular basis. I think he has quietly been uh, a contributor, maybe that we didn't expect to have the type of impact he has. And I say that, and I mean, seriously, people, that is an impact. When you kick the ball yeah. in the end zone and you're not giving the team a, a chance to return, we've seen in the past – how special teams can just devastate teams, and you know, he's been good. He's been really good. Yeah. Also made a uh, also made a PNT, PAT in this one, so I don't want to forget that. Continues mm -hmm. the tradition, you know. Knock on wood here, but uh, I don't think NC State has missed a PAT uh, no, since. You just, 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 just did it next week. No, nope. no. Nope. <laughs> hey, I've mentioned it. I've mentioned it almost every single week. Uh, so it hasn't it hasn't happened yet. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm tempting fate here. Uh, I did want to uh, throw up a question here. Uh, it was asked. I know our I know our offense seems to be run first this year, but the first four weeks of the season have shown that Clemson's secondary is their weak point. Hope we exploit it. Yeah, and you know we saw that we saw that today. Uh, obviously, you know I mean Sam Hartman is a great quarterback, but at the same time that uh you know they were able to to beat them over the top a lot. That's that's not something that we've seen from NC State a lot this year. We saw them. You know, be able to throw the ball a little more frequently over the top tonight against UConn. Do you feel like that needs to be a little bit more of a, a regular part of the game plan going into next week? I know how you feel about explosive plays. Yeah, so you're not going to be able to run up and down the field on Clemson. <laughs> I mean, they're going to stack the box. If you think yeah. that you're going to literally line up and just push them around, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Um, they're probably going to force NC State. I mean, and I say that after their poor performance, you know, in the secondary today to throw. And I mean, it's weak. It's a 
college football is such a week to week thing. You just see all the 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 wins and losses. I mean, App State here is two weeks removed from beating Texas A and M. They turn around and lose to James Madison. That's just an example. Yeah. Of how so just going into next week, you know, you really can maybe throw out Clemson's performance today. I mean, they could come out next week and, and be great on defense. I mean, they were expected to be one of the best defenses in the country. So, you know, I don't think you go in there, NC State, you know, overly confident. You've had your own offensive issues. To me, I think it's about going in there and just kind of playing within yourself. And when there's a play to be made, Corey, they've got to make it in the passing game. You can't have a drop. You can't have a throw behind or, you know, an interception. Um, you just have to make them because you're not going to have a ton of opportunities. The past couple, you know, three weeks or so, you've had chance after chance. You're just not going to get that next week. And really going forward, because you've got a lot of tough games coming up, and it obviously starts next week. State's got to figure out a way to consistently move the ball in the air. And ideally, it, you would hope that they could come away with a couple big pay, pay, pass plays next week. You really would. But – and even tonight, I thought Leary was good, but I still thought he struggled on a couple balls through some you know pretty inaccurate balls. The one that Thayer Thomas took for a touchdown was badly underthrown, and he pretty much made that play on himself. So – Again, it's two part. Leary's got to stand in there and deliver the ball. The receiver's got to got to step up and make catches. And you hopefully it starts next week. You hope this was kind of a sign of things to come for Thayer Thomas and Devin Carter. Because again, I think those guys are so critical going forward. Yeah, I also feel like getting a guy like Jordan Houston back and getting uh, you know Demi Sumo Karangbe back if he's able to play next week, which it sounds like you know Doran was pretty confident that both of them will be able to play next week. That's going to help the screen game too. And and we know. We know how much Tim Beck loves the screen, but also at the same time that that helps you to be able to create plays at all three levels too, where you're not just handing the ball off in the backfield and hoping to get those guys going, uh, but you're also able to toss it off to a guy like Jimmy Sumo or Kong Bay or, you know, or Jordan Houston, who I felt like was playing really well uh, in the screen game before he went out in last week's game too. So uh, getting both those guys back will help create uh, and get, you know, get some playmakers in space too for next week. Um, you know, kind of going off what you said, you know, App State losing to JMU today. You know, the Oklahoma loss was was against Kansas State, a team that just last week lost to Tulane. Uh, and then, you know, we've seen obviously Texas A&M that lost to App State uh, ends up beating uh, a top 10 Arkansas team today. Now, granted, it was at Texas A&M, it's at College Station. That's I mean, the they, they certainly rebounded since they yeah. lost. I mean, you know, you look at them, they lose to App State. Now they've turned around, they beat Miami, and poof, Miami had a bad loss, a uh, really bad loss to Middle Tennessee today. And you beat Arkansas. So all those people are ready to run Jimbo out of town. Maybe they'll allow him to finish the season. Shout out to the Red Raiders, by the way, of Texas Tech for beating Texas today. That uh, makes that win look even better. Yeah, it significantly helps. I mean, you know, Texas Tech is 3-1 and one right now. The only loss they have is to, to NC State. They beat two top 25 teams. The only yeah, one That was a convincing is. win by NC State last week. I mean, it could have yeah. easily been 40-14. to 14. So, you have to feel good about where you are. Again, it's so hard week to week to motivate or to keep these, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-old kids locked in. You're just seeing that it's been a wild year. And to State's credit, we talk about it. They're 4 and up. So, I mean – you know, however you get there at the end of the day, does it really matter? No, it doesn't, as long as you keep winning. All right. I do want to talk about Clemson again in just a second, but I wanted to uh, hand out the helmet stickers tonight. Who you got uh, on the offensive side of the football? A lot of dudes that, you know, could be worthy of it. I'll let you go with your first one, and then I'll I'll go with – I guess I'll go second, as usual. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Thayer Thomas. I just thought that play – the first play of the game, and, and, and on paper it's going to say 75-yard touchdown. I thought it was big on a number of reasons. First, you took a shot. Second, you – I'm not saying Leary has been struggling, but he's not been playing well. You go up and you make a play for him, and that really just set the tone, in my opinion. And, you know, he goes out and finishes with 115 yards. He'll block. He's a great in, – in, on special teams. I mean, he just does so much for this team. And uh, I just thought that one play, I'm a big fan of taking a shot on that first play, and they did it. And, again, the throw was not great. The catch was excellent. The run after the catch was great. Um, he's just so incredibly important to this team. What's that, 22 receiving touchdowns for his career? Yeah. I mean, he's, what, number two in school history now? Yeah. I mean, now, now talk about number two, one yeah. of the best walk-ons – 
in college football. I mean, really, how many how many yeah. walk-ons have gone on to have this type of career at any school, and he's not done yet? One at Clemson, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to that. I mean, it really is. This yeah. kid is – and if State were to win big this year, you know, I think it would increase his legacy even more, but just a, a hell of a football player. Yeah, I – I kind of want to cheat here and give it out to, you know, <laughs> to all four of the receivers that caught a touchdown tonight. Uh, because, you know, I mean, granted, you know, Devin Leary is the guy that had to spread the ball around. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, 320 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. Like, you can't fault him for it. But there were some plays that he kind of left on the field tonight that, you know, against a UConn team you'd like to see. Again, he threw the ball 44 times. So, there's there's a couple passes he's not going to complete there. Uh, but I – I'm going to cheat and give it to every single one of those guys because, you know, as you said, Thayer Thomas, big night for him. Uh, Devin Carter, he needed a game like this. You needed a game like this from him because he's the guy that, you know, caught the, caught two touchdowns against Clemson last year. And, and we really haven't seen him do, I mean, much of anything to this point this mm -hmm. year. So you needed a performance like that from him. Porter Rooks gets that monkey off his back. He's a guy that everybody's been calling for you know, for the last two years of like, when, when are we going to see his breakout? I don't think you've still seen it, you know, five receptions, 45 yards, but he does get his first career touchdown that I think he thought he should have gotten two years ago against UVA. Uh, and then, you know, Keon Lassane, not a, not a huge night for him overall, but he gets his first career reception too. You know, he's a guy that was propelled into a starting role. Uh, I think a lot of people have kind of been down on him where, you know, is, is he going to be, uh, good enough to be that that outside receiver, that starting outside receiver. But uh, you know, when you see what what he's capable of, I think he has a chance to to have you know a lot more success moving forward. Uh, and this you know helps him maybe you know gain some confidence too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat here and give it to all four of the receivers that caught touchdowns tonight. Uh, also, would be interesting, Corey, not to cut you off. That is something going forward that I think everybody needs to really focus on. What does this receiver rotation look like as we continue the year? It's going to get smaller. Yeah. So the cream is going to rise, per se, in my opinion. You can't continue to play 10 guys or how many they play, and they're playing the past couple of weeks. Who, um, along with, we know Thayer Thomas and Devin Carter are going to be there, but who's going to jump into that mix and become a consistent threat? Is it a guy like Porter Rooks? Is it Keon Lassane? Jordan, uh, I mean, you know, there's just, we could go down the list. Is it, you know, a running backs? Could also, Julian Gray. Um, yeah. yeah, Julian Gray could be involved. Um Anthony Smith, yeah. But there's just not but so many that you can have in a rotation. So I'm interested to see what does this smaller rotation look like next weekend. Like how, who are the five that are out there? We know, like I said, Carter and Thomas. But after that, who are third, four, three, four, five? Yeah, and we both kind of question that too. Is like, you know, is part of the continuity of this offense, is part of the struggles of this offense because of the fact that they have so many guys rotating in. You don't have that that constant continuity for this team too. So uh, I, I, I'm right there with you. I'm interested to see where you know the snap counts are for next week. I know the snap counts are going to be all over the place for this week because you were playing the UConn team. And, yeah, and take very little from these, this or yeah. that, you know, with the exception of a couple positions. Um, the skill positions in particular, you know, you talk about Houston and then Sumo Cornerback being out. I mean, that's kind of a wash at running back. It's just more so, in my opinion, about – okay, the guys came in and they did well. So that's what we can take. Didn't have any, you know, really poor plays. No mental lapses at the running back position, I didn't think. Um, again, but the receiver is – that's where I'm really – key. I know we talk about it week in and week out, but it, and it's become the most scrutinized group because you feel like with Devin Leary at quarterback, you've got to have guys help him. But at the same time, I think – Devin Leary would be the first to tell you he's not played his best football this year. So I think you're hoping it comes together next week, um, all of it, because I think that's what it's going to take to beat Clemson. Um, again, it's just – it sets up for a monster game, one of the biggest games in school history by a lot. I mean, it's not close. It's definitely one of the bigger biggest. Yeah, we don't know – we don't know about game day just yet, but I think some that's of the – That's the rumor that it's going to be there, and I mean, I, I haven't yeah. looked at the schedule, but it – I mean, seems about right. Yeah, I was going to say some of the losses that have taken place so far, uh, I think, help NC State significantly, particularly Arkansas. And, and people yeah. circled this game, obviously, in the all-off season. I mean, this yeah. has been on the national radar, whether it's 24-7 sports, CBA, all across the country, mm -hmm. as this was going to be a primetime matchup. And fortunately, these two teams have held up in their bargain. They're both 4-0. Uh, has it been pretty? No, uh, but they're there. 
They both have really good defenses. Um, I know Clemson didn't show it today. I have a suspicion that um, they will bounce back and give NC State uh, their best effort next week. But I, I think what you see next week, though, especially is just watch the, the, the linebackers and the defensive lines for these two teams. I mean, these are yeah. NFL-type dudes all over the place, and I think you're going to see – Going to see some impressive stuff up front next next week. All right, defensive side of the ball, uh, your helmet stickers, man. Joshua Harris, uh, my guy. I loved him when I covered him in recruiting. I'm pulling hard for him. Uh, just a super guy um, and his potential. It's obvious how good this kid can be if he continues on this trajectory. I mean, you can't move him tonight. What, he four tackles, had a sack, half tackle for loss. Um, and he's just getting better. Every game, you can see that confidence growing. He is, you know, in the best shape of his life, I would say. And it, 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 he's just really tough to handle. I mean, every week, uh, offensive line, you're going to have to kind of game plan for him. He's becoming that type of impact player. I mean, him and Corey Darden, again, that's quite a one-two punch inside. Yeah, I'm going to go with your other guy that you mentioned earlier, Davin Van. Uh, only had three tackles tonight, but I'm going to give you the stats here. The, the first tackle was for uh, was at the line of scrimmage, so for zero yards. Next one was negative eight, uh, a sack. And then the next one was negative four, a tackle for loss. So he finishes allowing negative 12 yards on the three tackles that he had uh, tonight. So a really strong night from him overall. Uh, looking forward to seeing what both of those guys are capable of moving forward. Um, and, yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, somebody mentioned here, uh, Droop, saying that uh, – it's a 7:30 game for NC State and Clemson next week on ABC. Yeah, we knew about that one. Uh, it's just it's trying to find out where College Game Day is going to be now at this point. Uh, also, where Josh Pate is going to be next week because uh, we've been talking to him throughout the offseason about where he might be going, and he said uh, he said Arkansas and Alabama might be on his list. And now Arkansas losing, uh, we'll see if NC State and Clemson is is the game day and you know, the choice for every given Saturday as well for next Saturday uh, for NC State and Clemson. Uh, Michael, any other any other thoughts coming away from this one, uh, or just your your thoughts on on the Clemson game next week? I know you said earlier, you know, biggest game, probably you know, in in a while, a period. long time. Well, I can't think of I can't think of one, you know, in NC State history in in recent history, anyways, with the exception of maybe the Wake Forest game last year. But this is this is one where you're really, you know, in terms of not just the storylines, you know, in the ACC, but also just nationally for both of these teams. Yeah, I mean, you're going to go in NC State. We don't know where they're going to be ranked tomorrow, and I know rankings are what they are. But if you're able to go in there and, and upset, because it would be upset, I don't know what their win streak is at home. It's something ridiculous right now. Is it 30-plus games? You go in there and you upset Clemson, you're in rare air probably that you have maybe never been in. Um, in, in NC State football history. I mean, I know that you had the, the season with Phillip Rivers, but I'm talking about you'd be 5-0 and easily inside the top 10. I mean, maybe even <laughs> maybe even higher, depending. But, I mean, we're putting the cart way before the horse. I'm just saying the opportunity that is in front of you is just typically one NC State has not had. Um, and this is where they're at. Uh, has it been pretty – through four games, not all the time, not all the time, but that's been the case, I think, across college football. And if you sit back and you watch it, Corey, every week you're seeing teams self-destruct and do things that are, are costing them games. And so that, to me, you put it in perspective and it makes you feel even better to be 4-0. And, and I know people are – certain people are always going to find something to complain about. We know that. But um, if you knew what you knew now, if you – 4 0, regardless of how you got there, you're going to Clemson. They're 4 0. I mean, if you're an NC State fan, really, what more could you ask for within reason? Yeah, I mean, you know, my whole thought process going into this one was you know, I'm going to have my, my Corey's conclusion that I always do on a weekly basis. Uh, I, I'll bring that back for tomorrow. I haven't done it the last two weeks. I didn't do it last or you know, two weeks ago because uh, it was, you know, it was the game that it was. It wasn't a very good one. Uh, NC State won that one 55 to 3. And then last week, uh, with so much going on, it was late. Uh, but I think this one, you know, the, the focus is, you know, now you're actually playing for uh, what you've been hoping for. Now you can talk about it. You yeah. Know, I two, think well, that's you, the thing is these two teams have set up what they what they went into the season hoping for. I think everybody was going, all right, if both these teams are 4-0 going into that game, they will have both, you know, beaten a quality opponent, NC State beat Texas Tech, you know, went on the road and beat ECU. 
uh, for, you know, for Clemson. Now they just came off a win against not only Wake Forest, but, you know, against Wake Forest with Sam Hartman. Now, this is a this is a really, really big one for, for those teams now that they've actually you know been able to help themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And again, um, I think it's a good feeling for State. They deserve to be there, not just, you know, just showing up in Clemson next week. You've beaten Clemson. You have through four games, shouldered all the hype. It has yep. not <laughs> – you have survived in, in one case. But, again, I think the most encour- one of the most encour- encouraging things for the last thing I'll say is I don't think NC State has played near a complete game yet on both sides of the ball. Um, and if you were able to get that, they're going to be really tough to beat. Um, it, the defense is, is as advertised. I mean, they have been lights out. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, relatively healthy. Uh, you hope they can, can stay that way. And I think really at the end of the day, Corey, if State's going to get to where they want to get this year, that alone is probably going to be the biggest thing. The healthiest teams are usually the best teams at the end of the year. The, the margin for error is usually that thin. You have one or two key injuries, and it can literally uh, change the outlook of your entire season. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, going back to it, I forgot to mention Shaheen Battle as well. Uh, you know, him getting back on the field, I think, was big for NC State, too, getting a chance to get him out there. He ended up with three tackles tonight. Uh, I don't know how many snaps he ended up taking, but uh, you saw him out there quite a bit in the first half. Uh, so getting him healthy and getting him, you know, some reps tonight, I think is going to be significant for next week, too. Uh, so we'll see where everything shakes out next week. But uh, this was a another, you know, again, 4-0 right now, uh, heading into Clemson. Uh <laughs> Setting up for a really big stage next week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mike, thank you as always for jumping on, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. Enjoyed it. We'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody. All right, guys. Well, thank you to everybody for jumping in. We will have obviously our, our weekly podcast is coming up Monday from Medios. If you guys haven't joined us for that, uh, make sure that you come out six thirty start time on Mondays from Medios. If not, you can join us here. We'll be doing these uh, each and every single Monday as well. Uh, but thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk to y'all soon.